Hello, I'm Lisa from Realizat and I'm sitting here with... Kuhn from Epica. You are currently touring through Germany. And do you like it so far and what do you think about the German fans? Uh, so far it's been great. We did three shows, uh, one in Bochum, in Hamburg and in Berlin. And two of those were sold out tonight Leipzig. And yeah, f for us Germany is getting better and better. More fans coming, uh, bigger parties. So it's, it's good. Did you see anything about the country to this moment? Um, well, actually, yesterday we had a day off in Berlin. And uh, a lot of us guys went to see Checkpoint Charlie and, uh, and the wall and stuff. But I stayed at the hotel. I, I went bowling with a, <laughs> with a couple of guys. <laughs> so I should have gone out, but no, I didn't. I'm sorry. Maybe you're getting older with Epica. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, I've, I've been in Berlin a few times and I've seen a lot. So yesterday I decided to not go out. Are you looking forward for tonight's show? Yeah, of course. It's good. We had a day rest yesterday, so we are probably uh, excited to play again. Yeah, it's always boring to not play. And uh, I guess today will be good. It's been uh, quite some time since we played Leipzig, I think. so. You have Dragon Force as support band with you. After what I've noticed, a very appropriate band with um, similar changes in the new album. What do you think about the band and their music? Uh, it's great. Um, it's kind of fast, so you have to... They, they do it like a specific thing, but I think they do it really well. And we have did our previous tour last year, we also did with Dragon Force. They're really nice guys and uh, they're really good at what they do. It's fun to see their show. It's really good. You have to see it and you laugh your ass off. It's good. <laughs> you travel with your own light show and headlights are very um, exceptional. Um, your stage outfits are designed by Ingeborg Steenhaus. How important is, uh, are the things around um, your show for you? Well, it's not around the show. I think it's, it's part of the show. It's just a show and, um, well, how important, you know. Uh, It's, it's basically all about the music, but um, if you present it in a certain way, then I think your message comes across better. And um, if you want to uh, be more serious about your performance, then I think that that's the next step, you know, a big light show, uh, matching clothing. You know, it's, it's not really necessary, but it makes the whole thing look better, and I think that's important too. But when you're not serious, when you're um, silly on stage, for example, Max splashing the audience, Isaac playing with sticks, or you jumping with your keyboards, is it planned or is it spontaneous? Well, all those things start spontaneous, but uh, you know there are certain parts in the songs or in the show where you can do that kind of stuff. So it it comes back at certain points, so it come it becomes part of the show as well. You know, but um, I like to try to. Uh, kind of do things to the other guys without them knowing so that there's a little bit of distraction going on which makes the show more fun for us to play of course so some things are planned but I try to do things that are not planned so that's that's more fun <laughs> and of course I think it's very um, nice for you to have this um, this portable keys um, mm -hmm. on some songs so that you can move a little bit more. Yeah, it makes me it makes me able to walk around stage and that's that's really for for a keyboard player it's fun. Yeah. The Quantum Enigma is a great album in my opinion your strongest to this Thank moment. You. Um, you has reached the charts position for example in Germany 11 or the Netherlands um, pl uh, place 4. Did you thought about this when you creating the album? Well, that's not that's not a goal from us, and I think uh, nowadays also the music industry works totally different. So I don't know what what the numbers are worth, but it's always good that uh, to see that a lot of people want to have your music and buy it, and so you get chart positions. It, it's it's not our main goal. We just want to make the music, and um, of course, it's really awesome that a lot of people like it. But it's not that we think oh we have to be that position. Otherwise, it's worse than last time so I have a quote uh, we don't see the things as they are we see things as we are does it mean that this looks different for us too it could be yeah um, it's kind of I, I see a Christmas decoration but it's not Christmas so it must be something else right I don't know no it's yeah uh, everybody has a different view on stuff and that's also what it's about and it's actually scientifically proven that if you look at certain things they behave differently than when you don't look at certain things. And that's the quantum enigma, so they don't know why, but it just happens. So if I look 
for instance, at uh, naked Belgian dudes, then uh, you can, s I see them, but maybe you see something else, you know? It's kind of weird. It's an enigma. <laughs> it's an enigma, yeah. And, we, and we're trying to solve it the best way we can, but... If you look at your current fo promo pictures, then Simone has real model qualities, and of course she made it into the Playboy. Um, Did she? Farm on fire with clothes, yes. Oh, I didn't know. I wanted to ask what you think about this. <laughs> I didn't know. But you don't play one, no. Yeah. No, I didn't see those pictures. Very beautiful, but with clothes. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Well, you know, nah. I, I didn't know she was, but you know, she's a gorgeous girl, and uh, she really knows her way around with the makeup and with the modeling. So that's, you know, the, her hobby besides Epica. She has this makeup blog and fashion stuff going on. And I'm a total fashion noob, so I don't know anything about it. But, but I think you all uh, look good. And <laughs> in addition to musical talent, does um, looking good be an advantage or doesn't it matter in metal business? Um, I would be lying if I said it wouldn't matter at all. I think if you look at the bands that are also in pop music, even more in pop music, if you look at the artists, they all look good. And I'm not, uh, I don't say that I look good, but I think that, uh, if, that we have Simone as a front woman. Uh, probably has a lot of people, a lot more people coming to the show because they only want to see her, you know? And, I don't think it's a good reason, but I, I think it's fine that they come. <laughs> okay. Um, Simone told something about an extreme um, sports session on the last gig. Um, what sports do the band make to keep fit? Well, uh, uh, I joined Isaac this tour. Uh, he's kind of like doing some workout stuff, uh, internet program uh, that he has to do stuff every day. It's, it's kind of what you can do around, you know. We brought some weights and we do some cardio and some exercise, but uh, it's actually going very well. It's the first tour that I can participate after four days, so. But we work out a little bit. Mark, he's really, uh, he brought his bike, so whenever he can, he goes uh, and rides his bike all, all the way, or he runs, he runs outside, but we keep it inside and just do some weightlifting. And, but it's just to, to stay in shape, not to look good on stage or anything. Yeah. <laughs> Because you drink a lot of beer, so you get fat, so you don't want to like compensate for it. Beer and chocomel. Yeah, I don't do the chocomel. That's even worse than beer. Yeah. The Quantum Enigma is more than any other album of you a total work of art. Um, of course, you can hear it, but also see it, for example, in the yearbook. Many well-known people worked on it. Will the another, another project be as large as this? Well, yeah, you always try to top your own product, I think. And um, as we are more experienced every time, you, you have bigger and better ideas so I think of course we're going to try to make an even better album but also with better uh, artwork connections and better connections to the live show and stuff it's all really hard to uh, plan it in advance so it, eventually you're working on stuff and then there's another idea oh it would make it awesome and then you try to incorporate it but it's always already a little bit too late and you know so it's it's a fun process but it's a hard process but of course we're going to try to do our best to make better stuff again Yeah, it's a, little, uh, it's a little bit hard to top this, I think. Well, yeah, but that, that's what they said all the time. Or that's, yeah. that's, that's a challenge every time, you know. When you make your debut album, everybody says, oh, great album, I hope the second album will be better. And now, you know, all the time people say, I hope the second time the next album will be better. And you try to make it better, but you never know. You never know. If you have to put the essence of the quantum enigma in one or a few sentences, what would you say? The essence of the quantum enigma. I don't know. That's that's. I don't know. It's the matter of looking at something that can change your world. So, always keep an open mind to stuff. That's good. <laughs> But that's the main subject. I don't know if that you know covers the musical area. It's. Uh, The musical field was uh, more than ever a team effort, so that's, that's the music. And the theme of the album is basically the same as Design Your Universe. If you are willing to do stuff and you are focusing on it, then you can change whatever you want. In Hamburg you played 12 songs and some extra ones, but only five numbers from your new album. Um, 
what about this? Um, is it very difficult to establish a new album live? And um, do the people, uh, the fans want to hear some old numbers again and again? Yeah, yeah. we, we always try to make the perfect set list, of course. And um, we are promoting the new album, so the main focus is on the new album. But, you know, if you are making more albums, it's harder to choose the songs of which you can put into the set list. So um, we try to play songs from every album. Uh, of course, there are certain songs that fans really want to hear, like Cry for the Moon and Consigned to Oblivion, so th those are easy, and then you have to fill it up. And um, we, we try to look at the fan favorites and, uh, and our favorites, so... Yeah, but it's, it's, it's kind of difficulty, and, and sometimes, you know, now we added some songs about uh, freedom of speech again, you know, because of everything that's happening in, in Paris and in the world right now, just to be a little political correct, I don't know. <laughs> that would have been my next question because yeah. Foods and of Damnation and Matter of the Free Word are songs about this and it's a very current um, team. How important is freedom of press and speech for you and um, how dangerous is religious fanatism? Uh, that's difficult questions. No, I, I, you know, I think uh, the, the discussion that should be held now is uh, not about the freedom of speech. Everybody uses the excuse of the freedom of speech to say whatever he wants. And I can say terrible things to you now and you know, claim that I have the right to do that because I have the freedom of speech. And I, I don't think it's a good thing. I, you know, I don't need to harm you uh, just because I can. It's, it's no use. And the same goes with uh, Islamic stuff or Christianity. If you want to say something, you should also have, uh, have arguments and uh, can back up the story. Why? And, and a lot of people just say stuff because they hear politicians say it on, on, uh, online or on TV and then they just follow them without thinking at all. And they claim the right to have the freedom of speech, which of course is a brilliant right, but you don't have the freedom to uh, insult, I think. And that's, that's a, a, a fine line that should be, you know, you don't have to make rules for it, but everybody should just relax and do, you know, be normal. Just don't fuck up everybody just because you want to. There's no need, you know, you get war, you get terrorist attacks. I can do without them. <laughs> but, yeah. What do you think about it? Because you're a journalist, so you, you, the freedom of speech is important, but... Yeah, I think it's uh, one of the important, most important rights uh, because we are in a democracy. That's very important. But I think I don't have to insult one like you two. Yeah. But also, you know, I, I, I'm terribly against religious fanaticism because it, I think no good comes from it. But um, and I'm also, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that that whatever this uh, magazine printed uh, was a reason to kill them. But um, a lot of, you know, it goes now that everybody has to say something like Islam sucks. Everybody says it now because a few terrorists who are, happen to be uh, Muslims attack the, the, the paper there. But that's not how it works. It's just, you don't have to just say it because you can't say it. That's not freedom of speech in my book. It's a very hard, uh, hard to make a bridge now to go on. Uh -huh. <laughs> what was your best uh, moment with Epica? Tell this moment. Um, one of the best moments was the, was the retrospect show we did. Uh, I think it was already two years ago. You know, it was our 10th anniversary with, all the, with the big orchestra and um, the whole production. We did it all by ourselves. And I think that was one of the best things we did but I like every aspect of, of the band and it's really good to be on tour again and uh, I really like playing live every night that's that's the main reason why I'm in the band and you know it's always good do the people remember you since you cut off your hair yeah I think so there's some do some don't but it's <laughs> it's okay do you have a funny story from backstage at last a funny backstage sorry mm -hmm. Well, there was this day two days ago in Berlin, and we ended up in the bus with Diablo Boulevard, and they took all their clothes off somehow. And it, no details, please. <laughs> no, uh, the, you know there are these pictures going around on, on on Facebook what happens in the backstage, but it's all everybody's sitting there with their laptop and just you know uh, sending WhatsApps to their uh, loved ones, and it's 
practically super boring. So no, nothing actually happens backstage, really. Okay, um, do you have last words for the fans? Um, well, thank you very much for sticking to Epica, and um, I hope to see you at the show or some other shows. Keep on rocking. Thank you very much. Thank you.